I don't believe in you have to hit it clean for a chip shot. Oh gosh, what a sound. Right. I'm with Parker McLaughlin today. Hey Parker, how are you? I'm great. Parker was a tour player for a long time. How many times were you out on tour? Uh, four, four years for a uh, full card, but uh, because I won out there, it's been, shoot, almost 14 years. Okay, and you won an event? Yep. Oh, exciting. And now he really is concentrated on the short game. He is the short game chef on Instagram and has a huge following on there. And we got together to talk a little bit about chipping. Specifically, what I wanted to talk about, uh, Parker, was most people when they chip have, there's kind of a problem with chipping which is that you want to hit the ball, you know, and you want to hit the ball first without uh, clipping. And the best way to hit the ball first is to get real steep on it. But that also doesn't give you a lot of options when you're that steep. So just as an example, like if I wanted to be 100% for sure that I wasn't going to flub this or thin it, then I would just really get all my weight over here with it like this and get ball first. Correct. But that is pretty uh, limited in what you can do around the greens. So help us out just on a basic, let's say like a 50-50 shot. So that's like 50 carry, 50 roll. Yep. Just give us some good basic instruction about how people can hit cleaner, more crisp. Well, I think that, I think let's just start with the, the misconception that you have to hit it clean. Okay. Okay, so I don't, I don't believe in you have to hit it clean for a chip shot. I think you can actually graze the grass before the ball. You don't necessarily have to hit ball first. I think that's where we start going down the wrong okay. rabbit hole, mm -hmm. right? Because again, like you said, intuitively, if you're trying to hit ball first, you're going to go ball back in your stance, handle way forward, yeah. right? Because then you're like, oh, okay, I'm for sure going to hit the ball first, but you got no control. Ball's coming out extremely hot, yeah. right? So my solution to that is I don't want to hit ball first. I want to take that away. I want to be able to actually utilize the bounce. Mm -hmm. So how do I utilize the bounce? Well, you got to start getting shallower. We got to change our shaft angle, right? So rather than taking that shaft from leaning way forward, bring it back to more neutral. Okay. Yeah. And then this is going to allow us to start to engage the bounce or essentially the back edge of the club. Mm -hmm. That's what we want to engage on this, on this, uh, this pitch shot, chip shot. I don't want the leading edge sticking in the ground. Um, and I don't want to compress the golf ball. I don't want to get great ball contact. Right. I would much rather live with a drop kick versus great ball contact. I'd much rather live with the player that, that his miss is a, is a drop kick than the guy that's really trying to hit ball first. Okay. Yeah, because let's get down really, really low, Mike. So get all the way down to the ground, Mike. Come down here with me, Parker. So let's take, for example, like fairway lie. Mm -hmm. What is happening in the dynamics of what's going on in a good chipping so motion? So ideally in a, good, in a good chipping motion, it's gonna not be as much of a V. So a V would be straight up, straight down, and then exit out this way. Yeah. Lots of turf interaction in a bad way. I would much rather be a U where we're coming in shallow, actually grazing the grass somewhere back in this area right here, and then hitting the ball. Right. This is actually gonna provide us with more spin, and it's gonna provide you margin of error that's gonna be greater uh, and your miss hits are going to turn out much better. Like Keith today, we were working uh, at TPC Summerlin and Keith today kept hitting these drop kicks to this far away from the hole. And he's yeah. like, well, there's another drop kick to kick in. Right, right. And it's like, he hit so many of them. He's just like, this is, a, this is too, it's too easy. It's like cheating. So yeah, if you hang around like really good uh, short game players, the sound they make is a little different because it, you hear a a brushing sound correct and then you hear a click and then that click is a muted immediately muted by a by a thud over here so so it's like a shh, click and then boom. yeah <laughs> something like that to, to, <laughs> to put in the way, the way it sounds but it's a very unique sound so yeah. let um hit a few a few chips sure. for us and just talk about the kind of how you would hit this so say this is a tournament yeah if i go to the i mean let's just say i go to the second pin like the tall one. Yeah. I'm trying to build the shallowest angle of attack possible. That's my goal, yeah. right? So how do I build a shallow angle of attack? Well, let, let's, let's take a few balls here. So if I go really steep, right? If I'm trying to chase good ball contact, I would go here and let's say I go behind it. That's <laughs> what it's going to look like, yeah. right? Which is what most people look yeah, like. Yeah, I've seen that. Or the other, the other fault people fall into, how many times have you been told to lean all your weight on your front foot? Yeah, oh yeah. All yeah. the time, right? Uh -huh. Literally what's going to happen is I lean all my weight on my front foot. My angle of attack is now extremely steep. So I'm either going to go there or I'm going to go 
that way and, and almost basically blade it. Yeah, your body can almost feel like, oh, okay. that's too much, and yes. like abort. And I'm like, that's exactly okay. what happens. Okay. That's the intuitiveness of the golfer. He's going to feel like, oh, I've got, because I'm, we're only trying to hit this like 12 yards. Yeah. So if you've got all your weight stacked over here, I'm, my angle of attack's going down. I'm increasing my ball speed. Mm -hmm. So as I stack all this weight here, my body, and once I get to here, my body's like freak out mode, right? Red flags everywhere. Yeah. Abort, mm -hmm. right? Get me out of here because I know I'm going to hit it too far. That's, the, that, that's where the intuitiveness sort of comes in. Okay. The second you feel like you got to hit it too far, you slow down or you back out of it. Okay. The slowing down or backing out, neither one is good for us. Okay. I want my players to feel like they can put a ton of speed into the shot. Yeah. So a lot of the times I do a drill where I'll, I'll pause at the top, right? You've got, I, I can kind of pick both my feet up. I'm not stacked super on my left foot, right? I can go to the top. I'm pause and now it's like, okay, I'm trying to get to that hole, right? Now I've delivered speed in the right spot. I misjudged it a little bit. But the point being is that I can go, I can deliver all my speed through the shot. I can yeah. be here and I can deliver all my speed through the shot versus if I go here and I've created all my speed. Yeah. Now it's like slow down, slow down, slow down, mm -hmm. right? So. To me, I want the player that can move through it quickly versus uh, the player that's going to try to slow down. So basically, are you saying like, if I'm hitting at a certain distance, you like to feel like the energy that you want is built into this. And it's not like, okay, if I went to here, I would know intuitively that's too much. I'm going to have to do something. And if I went only to here, that's not enough. I'm going to have to. Correct. So it's about building the proper backswing. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, and we do that through our pivot. We don't do that through our arms and hands, right? Oh, so you like a, a softer hand? More pivot, more okay. pivot, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, check this out. Yeah, right, show me the action. All right, this is it. Good. That's pretty nice right there. Okay. But uh, yeah, again, look, right? Always pay attention to, like, are you taking turf or okay. are you shallow? Mm -hmm. I love a player that's way more shallow for these tight lies. Yeah. Now, the second we get into the rough, it's a different ball game. Right. I, I need to build some steepness in. But here, I want some shallowness. So we want to be able to like kind of disturb the turf, but not go all the way where Correct. we need to take Correct. it. Okay, gotcha. Correct. So if I if I were to put this club here, go mm -hmm. ahead, but I want you to pivot, and not use your hand. Oh, okay. There you go. Yep. Okay, that's different. I'll give you I'll give you this this. All right. Yeah. Here. Reminder. Good. Well, that felt kind of like you said with Keith's. It yeah. felt like a drop kick, but it's right, it's fine. Exactly, yeah. Right. Exactly. But it's no, it's no worries. Yeah. Now let's do one where you go to the top and pause. Right. Top and pause. Now go. Interesting, right? Yeah. So you, I, it you feel feels like, like you had to throw it That's not more. enough. Yeah. But what I want you to do is use your body more to pivot on the way okay. through. So here, and then, and then trust pivot. that's enough and use just There the it is. Okay. Yeah. Let's do that one more time. Good. Oh, that was nice. So that, that to me is where I would want you to sort of evolve. Okay. Like with, with your short game, I would want you sure. to take some of the, take some of the wrist mm -hmm. play. Um, because again, the the wrist play is going to add an angle of attack that's going to be steeper. Okay. Um, yeah, that's one of your main main points is that like if this if I'm at like this at address, we don't like full swing. I'm at like this at address correct. and an impact. I'm like that, right? Right. But here you're saying, and also in the full swing, like we're not trying to, we're trying to like hit the ball and then be like 1.5 smash factor. Right. But you're saying like you want it to be like more like 1.1 and also return the loft to what you built in. Correct. So okay. if, you start with a ton of, if you start with a ton of shaft lean, it's going to be really hard for you to eliminate that. Okay. Right? Unless you got to just throw it. You got to throw it. And that, and that becomes a dicey proposition, right? Because we, mm -hmm. we all know that trying to throw it like this with our small right. muscles, is, is a, you, can't, you can't predict it. At the player that, that is hitting it, it feels like they're not making a V bottom, but they still feel like they're getting it fat and thin. They're, they're not having the kind of control over their bottom that they, they want. So you're saying a, a player that, that is more of a, more of a U shaped? Yeah, they say, so they've, they've kind of developed the U shape. They feel like they're coming into it shallow, yep. but they're still, especially because I see this a lot if you ask somebody to activate the bounce. You know, the bounce then starts climbing up off the ground and, and you know, they're ca catching it a little thin. You yeah. Know? I don't want, uh, yeah, so again, I don't want it to be thrown this way to create a U. Okay. That's no good, right? 
So if I, if I get to the top here and then I throw it to try to create my U, there's a good chance I'm gonna hit it way fat and I'm gonna hit and I'm gonna blade it, mm -hmm. right? I always like to do this drill with my students to put this in my belly button. Yeah. And then you grip down the shaft and then as you pivot to the back, right? Yeah, feet close together, there you go. Pivot to the top of your swing, stop there. Mm -hmm. Soften your hands, let me take this. This is where you should be in your backswing. Right? Yeah. I've taken away all this of yours. Oh yeah. Right? But you've done it through your pivot. Now go ahead and Yeah, this sure feels comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> you know. It, which I bet you're a but great I'm bunker player. Change it. Yeah, yeah. You I bet you're a great bunker player there, because yeah. that's how we want to do it in the bunker. Okay. So do that again. Now pivot. Yep. Now I want you to pivot back to here and then pivot through. So way more body rotation. This is where you should be at follow through. Way yeah, more not body. in L to L no, or whatever. Yeah, no. it's, it's keeping the Y. Yeah, like I'll even aim. I'll try to drop kick it when I get really nervous, right? Like hear that drop kick? Yeah. So you just know for sure, like, okay, I've, I'm not as, nervous about fatting it because I know I'm trying to fat it. As long as I build a shallow angle of attack, I'm good, right? I can, I can hit an inch behind it. So now give me your feet closer together. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now I want you to do that same thing, pivot and then pivot through. Oh, that's a good sound. Well, not a better sound. Oh, yeah. But that's, now you're delivering fun. the speed in the right spot. If you start going this way, you've got all this speed accumulated. Now what? You better throw it because if, you if you're taking a backswing like this to only hit it to that pin, yeah. this looks like you're going to hit it 60 right, yards. Right, right. <laughs> so it? you have to add loft so that that energy will put it in the air rather than yeah. just gone. Yep. Yeah. So I'd rather you just not build it in the backswing, right? Which is why I put this here for so you. So you go Y, pivot to okay. Y. Now all of a sudden, the ball is going to come up short because I've taken away your ball speed. Yeah. And that's the miss you like. Oh, yeah. So with thin to win in full swing and fat is where it's at. For, <laughs> for, for, yeah, for, I would never call it fat. I would, I would fat. call it, it's, it's yeah, right. I would call it drop kicking because it's not, it's, you're never really taking turf. Close. What are some of your favorite drills uh, for people to improve their contact? A uh, uh, big short game guy, a friend of mine, Tim, always says that you want to get to the point where off of a fairly fairway will lie mm -hmm. you can get like eight out of ten like clipped pretty good yeah well, i would go trail hand only mm -hmm. so for you as a right hander i would say if you just did it did drills where you um can you show us doing that yeah right for sure only? and i think there's a guy one of uh mike bender's guys he only he only chips right hand only there's, right now you know you look at you look at the guys that have really struggled that play on tour um or, or play at a high level if they really struggle yeah. Where do they go? If they're going to go one-handed, they're yeah. always going trail hand. They're never going lead hand. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So if they're going to go like this, they're going to feel here. Oh, gosh. What a sound. Right? That's but great. But again, and I, and I like to put my, my pointer finger here mm -hmm. just to make sure that I'm not, if I just do it the wrong way, watch, watch my finger. <laughs> it hasn't moved. It hasn't moved. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I, I got away with that one, but I would much rather it be watch my pointer finger here. Yeah. So much more moves. Yeah, they talk a lot about the buttons on your shirt. You don't want them to freeze. No. Yeah, at, at any point. Okay. But again, I don't. It, you know, because it's such a short shot, people fall into the trap of like, well, it's a short shot. I'm just gonna move small. Oh, okay. Just gonna right. make small movements. Right. Everything else is gonna be quiet. It's uh -huh. like, I want you to move. Okay. Like, I, this is an athletic movement. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's like, so I don't want you to be static here and just be yeah. like small muscles, arms and hands, and do that. One thing I wanted to ask you about, because you said something so that was a bit against orthodoxy. So orthodoxy, we're all on our left side, right? Yep. And you just talked about being a little bit more balanced, but also moving. What, what kind of happens with the weight shift in the chipping action? Like, are we just, you know, a lot of times we say 80-20, leave it 80-20 the whole time. What do you like? I, yeah, I don't like that. I would much rather you feel like it's going slightly into your arch of your foot, uh -huh. right? pivoting here and then and then obviously like I want us to be working that direction okay right okay. Um, but I just don't want it to be I don't want it to start here because then if I feel like if I start here I just for me and for most people that I work with the second that you start 80 20 and you go to the top of the swing I just feel and all my clients feel like they're gonna hit it too far yeah and then they'll back out and then that's when all the bad stuff happens. So what do you like to be at, at address for, for like, we're talking about this 50, 51, pretty standard on the, on fairway lie. What do you like to be at address? 50, 50, 50, 50. Mm -hmm. And then we're going this way and then we're just traveling that way. Absolutely. A little bit. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Try to hit one good one before we wrap it up. So here, here, 
just keep the buttons on my shirt moving. Yeah, I, I, really. I would say, I would say like really close. Yeah, okay. I would say just shorten that backswing, right? Allow yourself to just pivot back. There you go. See how that came out flighted? Yeah. You're actually delivering yeah, the speed in the right it. spot. Yeah. Okay. But again, like, you know, for you, you know, your habit is, I mean, you already, you've already got a ton of weight going forward okay. to start with, right? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So finish your thought. <laughs> well, yeah. it's just a, it's just a habit. It's hard to get out of it. So what I would do is put your feet totally together. Mm -hmm. Why don't you hit one like that? And right? just feel centered. Don't yeah, feel like Yeah, just feel I'm centered. Going. Correct. See, oh, yeah. now to me, that's a proper drop kick. Okay. Yeah. Like yeah. that was actually really good. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's well, crazy, I, can, right? I can feel how some people would hit that and be like, it didn't feel mm. great. Yeah. Cause it's, it doesn't have that kind of smash factor you're thinking of. Right. But if you're thinking of it as like, no, I want to be a little muffled to take the hit out of it so I can swing hard. So that I can spin it. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Because that, at the end of the day, the harder I can swing, the more I can spin it. Okay. So if, if I'm trying to compress the golf ball, that's adding speed to the ball. I don't want to add speed to the ball. I want to take speed away. Mm -hmm. So yeah. if I can take speed away by, you know, building a shallow angle of attack, um, and, and, and again, even weight positioning, this is adding ball speed, yep. right? As I get into my lead foot, I'm adding ball speed. Yeah. So I'm going to do something intuitively to take that away okay. yeah. during my swing, which is never a recipe for success. Right. The red lights start flashing. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to have more videos coming up with Parker. So be sure to be subscribed here to Be Better Golf. Go over to Instagram and find Parker on Instagram. He is Short Game Chef, right? That's it. At Short Game Chef on Instagram. And you'll see lots of, he's putting up a lot of cool stuff. Next time with Parker, he's going to be showing off these really cool wedges that he has. But you'll have to be subscribed to see it. <laughs> see ya. Bye.